Hi, Mark again here, um, showing you another tutorial, this time based on creating some terrain areas uh, using purely ProBuilder. Uh, and it's again, it's precision, uh, so that's important. So um, you can see that there's a bit of a hillside here. Terrain's not perfect, etc. And there's a bit of shine on it, which obviously you could change. But I'll show you quickly how to produce this. So, without further ado, we'll get rid of that, get rid of that, and get rid of that, and then we'll start again with the Control Shift K. Now, in this Control Shift K, what I've done, um, I've created, um, so I started with 16 by 1 by 16, but I'll just uh, demonstrate how if you do it, did it by 10 and these are all meter squares here so you get an idea you, you're quite accurate on how to produce the terrain and the base or ground level um, if you wanted to as I'm going to demonstrate here subdivide uh, you press shift key down and you can see subdivide faces shows as alt s so if you alt s that's great because you've got them all in the lines in line with the the blocks of one meter squares on the base. Alt S again starts to overlap. Then you've got half a meter between each one. Then you've got two and a half meters between each line. That makes it a bit complicated. So what we'll do, we'll delete that. Control Shift K and I'm going to put this as 16. The reason for that is, I don't know if you've ever played darts, um, if you're trying to finish on a double, uh, all the professionals try to uh, get to 32, so they can then, if they miss the 32 and accidentally hit 16, they've still got 8, so they go for double 8, and they hit that accidentally hit the 8 instead of double 8, they go to 4. So it means that you go from 32 to 16 to 4. I'll explain that in a moment. Because if I go like so, Control Shift K, and I hope I've made that clear, that you've now got 16 by 16. If I subdivide Alt S, yes, that's in line so far. Alt S again, oh yes, it's all perfectly in line again because they're all subdivided, so they can all be cut in half. So Alt S again and Alt S again. You've now got 16 by 16, which I think is 256 squares, if I remember with my mathematics. Um, so 16 by 16, you've got 256 squares, which you can then work with uh, when you want to start working on targets. Because what you can do, for instance, if you wanted a particular square or a number of squares to be a target, you can go to detach faces if you wanted and you could call it a target now you might want more than a target but say for instance you're firing at something or you want something to move to something else uh, you've got an area on the terrain now which is a target area still looks the same but you've got it as a particular game object now uh, that's very useful, for instance, when you're using navigation, artificial intelligence, uh, which could be another tutorial if anyone requests it, um, moving what, something from one place to another, where the artificial intelligence automatically navigates it to that area. But uh, as I say, that's another tutorial. But we'll just come out of this and get rid of the game object. And what I wanted to show is just the terrain. Now, in the terrain, you can, just as I'm going to do here, go to some colours. I'm just going to colour this. Not a great colour, but it's basically sort of grassed area kind of thing. Now, if I wanted to make, let's try and highlight some of these. Let's make this, let's come out of there. Make this just something a bit different, like so. If I wanted to make this a hill, I could go up by one meter. And the way to do that is to keep the control key down and bring it up like so. Looks a bit high to me, 
Um, if something's trying to climb up it, it's a bit too high. I think you're looking at a 45 degree angle there, and that's going to be pretty much the maximum you'd expect something to move it up. So if we control Z and go down to say 0.5, and you can go to anything, this basically is 50 centimeters instead of uh, uh, one meter. All right. So again, control key down, left mouse button, come up like so. Now, you can see you've got some terrain there. Just control Z to come back to there. And I'm just, oh, your pardon. I'm just going up to there like so. I'm now going to select all of it. Reason being, just missed a couple of bits there. I want to go to the smoothing tool and click on number one as a smoothing section. And you can see how that looks nice and smooth. You've still got the squares, so you've still got areas where you can produce targets, etc. Um, and if I wanted to, I could quickly go to the prefabs and I can find them. And I'll just quickly throw prefab on there, which is something I've been working on, which is a farm, historical farm. Which some of you may recognise if you know the Battle of Waterloo. And I'm just going to put that over like so. So you can get an idea of how you can put a farm on top of a slight hill or some kind of gradient. Um, very good for making battlefields. So hopefully that will be useful because it's not just about creating terrain, but having the terrain which is useful when you actually want to try it to create strategy and tactics. So for instance, if you're creating some kind of battle scene and you want obviously certain terrain areas to be strategic points, etc. Hopefully that's useful. Uh, as I mentioned before, again, if anyone can subscribe when they see this, if they find this useful, uh, I'll be very grateful. And if you do want any kind of, uh, based on this particular terrain, uh, a tutorial on how to quickly create navigation for characters or units, etc. Uh, by all means, comment on this particular tutorial. Thanks a lot. Bye.